Good morning and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and welcome to Dow Yu International Holdings Limited's fourth quarter in full year 2022 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. We will be hosting a question and answer session after management's prepared remarks. I will now turn the call over to the first speaker today, Ms. Ling Ling Kong, IR Director at Dow Yu. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fourth quarter and full year 2022 earnings call. Join us today, Mr. Xiao Jiechen, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Mei Ming Su, Chief Strategy Officer, and Mr. Hao Tao, Vice President of Finance. You can refer to our fourth quarter and full year 2022 financial results on our IR website at ir.dou.com. You can also check a replay of this call when it becomes available in a few hours on our IR website. Before we start, please note that this call may contain forward-looking statements, may pursue into two safe harbor provision for the Private Security Litigation Reform Act of 1995. This forward-looking statement is based on management current expectations and observations that involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors not under the company's control, which may cause actual results, performance, or achievements of the company to be materially different from the results, performance, or expectations implied by this forward-looking statement. All forward-looking statements are expressly quantified in their entirety by the cautionary statement, risk factors, and details of the company's filing with the SEC. The company undertakes no duty to revise or update any forward-looking statements for selected events or circumstances after the date of this conference call. I will now speak on behalf of our Chairman and CEO, Mr. Xiao Jie Chen. Throughout 2022, Against the backdrop of a complex and volatile macro environment, we remain committed to our long-term growth strategy of fostering a vibrant game-centric content ecosystem. We ended the year with a stable business performance achieved through a mix of operational adaptation and innovation that included optimizing our revenue structures, streamlining our operations, creating new services, and enhancing monetization capabilities. In the fourth quarter, we continue to produce premium gaming content, upgrade our content operating model, and improve the interactive features on our platform to further enhance user engagement. Our mobile MAUs grow slightly on a sequential basis to 57.4 million during the quarter, with the total number of paying users of 5.6 million and our adjusted net loss was RMB 4.3 million. Through a couple of strategic adjustments over the past few quarters, our ecosystem has been shown to be healthier, which we believe it will empower us to deliver long-term sustainable growth. As we progress further into 2023, we are continuing to enrich our content with community interaction playing a key role in our ecosystem. We are shifting the focus of our user growth strategy from increasing scale to improving quality without being overly concerned about the short-term growth of our business. Furthermore, we will optimize our marketing strategy through strengthened partnerships with game developers, coupled with our interactive gaming content community to enhance user engagement. In addition, with the price level of copyright determinants gradually retaining to a reasonable range, we believe that prudently purchasing some co-copyright determinants will help us cement our overall competitiveness in the industry. This investment will also foster the ecosystem of our game-centric community and enhance our co-users engagement and retention rate thereby facilitating the company's long-term development. Next, I'd like to share with you our business updates from the fourth quarter in more detail. First of all, our average mobile MAUs for the quarter were 57.4 million, 
a slight sequential increase despite a year-over-year -year decline of a point. The main reasons for the year-over-year -year and quarter-over-quarter -quarter MAO changes include, first, Due to the implementation of our selective copyright procurement strategy in early 2022, we experienced a decline in OOMAU since the fourth quarter of the year. Nevertheless, in the fourth quarter, despite the negative impact on user traffic from the absence of the World, of the LOL World Championship Tournament, our creative event campaign and operations on existing copyright tournament events effectively attracted and engaged our co-users. As a result, mobile and use on our platform achieved growth for the third consecutive quarter. Second, we continue to advance our innovative membership business, extending our game-specific membership services to broader game segments. By combining game features with users' needs, this initiative has gained traction among both new and existing users. Moving on to our content ecosystem, capitalizing on the widespread popularity of eSports, we continued to sharpen our products and operations, including the consistent upgrades of our game content. Based on gaming features, we continuously created an even broader selection of more interactive and engaging premium content. On top of that, we built a healthy and vibrant interactive ecosystem for users through innovative services, providing them with a community-based platform and a novel membership business. This effort can not only ensure long-term retention by meeting certain gamers' needs for upgraded game content but also increase overall user engagement and thickness on our platform. That's driving user growth in the long run. In the fourth quarter, we continue to improve our diversified self-produced tournament system and organize more than 90 esports tournaments. Leveraging our top tier streamer resources, we focused on promoting IP content in partnership with star game streamers. In this effort, we created a series of premium gaming content combined with entertainment-oriented activities in our game segments, such as League of Legends and Hall of Kings. This content genre, coupled with the training topics, is proven to increase users' motivation to engage in interactions and liven up our game community, appealing to both new and existing users. Self-produced tournaments has become one of our main avenues to promote esports popularity across the board. For example, based on Honor of Kings large gamer base, we held the Zhou Honor of Kings Yue Cup National Challenge. This competition opened enrollment to all Honor of Kings players and boosted easy access to rewards and wider user participation. Specifically, we integrated the tournament content with our user community. Users were able to enroll, participate, and advance in rank within our community channel, where other users could take part in a series of fun activities, such as a quiz, a single player competition, and interactive rewards. Combining game content with our user community captivated mind like gamers. And at the same time, it tightened bonds with heavy users. As we improved our self-produced tournament system and fully enhanced its value, we launched a series of esports talent selection mechanisms based on this tournament. In the year Cup mentioned earlier, we unveiled the esports star project, boosting growth opportunities to discover high potential streamers and fortify users' dignity. In the fourth quarter, we launched the Douyu Esports School Team Selection Season for Colleges. The competition covered three mainstream esports games and attracted more than 2,000 college teams from 11 provinces, providing more college esports fans with a platform to showcase their skills. It has also helped us to discover potential esports talents 
and enhance those appeals and brand influence among college and universities. In terms of copyright determinants, we reinforce user engagement and stickness through rich derivative content and diverse operational activities. In the honor of King Champions Cup KIC, we added auxiliary functions such as home team support and watching reminders to further elevate our user experience. Moreover, the team Wuhan eStar, which we signed and invested in, maintained its excellent performance throughout the year and became the champion of the Champions Cup. With the purchase of some co corporate content, we continue to deepen cooperation with game developers, fully integrating tournament content with our platform's operational characteristics to provide differentiated tournament-derived content and customized user services. Meanwhile, aligning with this tournament content, we will explore more commercialization channels to improve the ROI of tournament copyright. Moving on to our monetization strategy, our total number of paying users in the fourth quarter was 5.6 million, with a quarterly average output of RMB 293. We continued our paying user segmentation strategy from last quarter, which included canceling marketing activities for new paying users with low rates of return, maintaining our co-users' willingness to pay, and promoting more consumption of mid-range paying users. We also made progress in generating revenue from non-virtual gifting. First of all, we continue to refine and promote our platform-wide membership service system, strengthen the companionship and interaction between streamers and platform members, and consistently iterated membership features. In the fourth quarter, we launched sound effects and privilege gifts for members, leading to a sustained steady increase in members' renew rates compared with the third quarter, demonstrating high user signals among our fans. Furthermore, we extended our game-specific membership service to multiple segments. Based on the characteristics of each game, we launched customized game membership services to meet users' needs for in-game items. Going forward, we will strengthen our cooperation with game developers, delve deep into users' gaming needs, and explore more commercialization channels. In terms of our product R&D and function innovation, we continue to deepen cooperation with game developers. In compliance with laws and regulations, and based on our partial game dev sharing partnership with game developers, we integrated gaming data, content, and functions with those content and gameplay, making live streaming content close fit with this game. For example, in all of King's live streaming channel, users can easily team up with streamers and other users to play the game through the join with one click function making user-streamer interactions significantly simpler than before. In the past, users had to manually add friends into the game to form teams. In addition, we displayed more game-related data and gaming strategies through partial game data sharing in games such as Battle of Golden Spatula and Peacekeeper Elite, further optimizing our user experience and stimulating live streaming engagement. Overall, in the challenging year of 2022, we created a healthy and vital gaming content ecosystem through various operational strategies, including adjusting revenue generating activities and increasing investments in self-produced content, thereby maintaining stability in the company's overall business and financial performance. Going forward, we will continue to execute on our diversified game-centric content strategy and focus on maintaining the scale and quality of our core users. By further improving game content and strengthening our connection with core users, we will enhance user signals on our platform and elevate those values 
as a gaming content ecosystem. Meanwhile, we will continue to explore more commercialization channels and new growth avenues to maintain our leading position in the domestic game live streaming industry. With that, I will now turn the call over to our Vice President of Finance, Mr. Hao Tao, to go through the details of our financial performance in the quarter. Thank you, Lin Lin. Hello, everyone. For the full year 2022, we focused on optimizing costs and developing revenue quality in order to improve financial performance. As we continue to invest in high-quality, self-produced content and improve our revenue structure, we enhanced operating efficiency through adjusting our live streaming business together with effective cost and expense controls. For the full year 2022, our gross margin expanded to 13.9%, Adjusting net loss narrowed significantly to RMB 7.6 million. Let's now look at our financial performance for the fourth quarter in more detail. Total net revenues in the fourth quarter of 2022 decreased by 27.8% year over year to RMB 1.68 billion. Live streaming revenues were RMB 1.6 billion a decrease of 27.7% from RMB 2.21 billion in the same period of 2021. The decrease was mainly attributable to two factors. A continued implementation of prudent operating strategies and the one-off impact of a decline in streamers' activities following the end of COVID-19 restrictions. As a result, Virtual gifting interactions were partially impelled, which caused a year-over-year -year de decrease in quarterly up. Our quarterly up was RMB 293, down 4% from RMB 305 in the same period last year. Advertising and other revenues were RMB 84.3 million, compared with RMB 118.5 million in the same period of 2021. The year-over-year -year decrease was primarily attributable to the soft demand for brand advertising amid the challenging microeconomic environment. The decline was partially offset by the increase in other revenues contributed by game-specific membership services. Cost of revenues in the fourth quarter of 2022 was RMB 1.5 billion, a decrease of 28.2% compared with RMB 2.08 billion in the same period of 2021. Revenue sharing fees and content costs decreased by 31.2% to RMB 1.27 billion from RMB 1.85 billion in the same period of 2021. The, dec the decline was primarily driven by the following two factors. First, the decrease in revenue sharing fees was mainly in accordance with the decrease in live streaming revenues. In addition, the lower revenue sharing ratio, which was achieved through the implementation of our prudent operating strategies, led to a further reduction in revenue sharing fees. Second, the copyright costs decreased significantly as a result of a selective copyright procurement strategy, whereby we ceased acquiring overpriced content rights for eSports tournaments. The decrease was partially offset by an increase in self-produced content costs driven by additional year-end events launched during the quarter. And with costs, in the fourth quarter of 2022, decreased by 17.6% to RMB 138.4 million from RMB 167.9 million in the same period of 2021. The decrease was mainly due to the year-over-year -year reduction in peak bandwidth usage in the absence of the purchased copyright of major eSports tournaments. Gross profit in the fourth quarter of 2022 
was RMB 186.1 million, compared with RMB 244.7 million in the same period of 2021. Gross margin in the fourth quarter of 2022 was 11.1%. Compared with 10.5% in the same period of 2021. This margin improvement was mainly driven by the decrease in both revenue sharing fees and copyright costs as a percentage of revenues. The improvement was partially diluted by the rising percentage of revenues attributed to self produced content costs. Sales and marketing expenses in the fourth quarter of 2022 were RMB 123.9% million, a significant decrease of 45.9% from RMB 229.2 million in the same period of 2021. This was mainly attributable to a decrease in both marketing expenses for user acquisition and branding expenses. Research and development expenses in the fourth quarter of 2022 were RMB 80.6% million, representing a, a 39.2% decrease from RMB 132.6 million in the same period of 2021. This decrease was primarily due to a decrease in personnel related expenses. General and Administrative expenses in the fourth quarter of 2022 were RMB 55.2 million, a drop of 44.1 million percent from RMB 98.8 million in the same period of 2021. The decrease was primarily due to decreased share compensation expenses, as the vast majority of shares and our share incentive plans were fully vested as well as decreased professional service fees. Adjusted operating loss, which aspect Sherbet's compensation expenses was RMB 56 million in the fourth quarter of 2022, compared with RMB 168.7 million in the same period of 2021. Net income in the fourth quarter of 2022 was RMB 41.8 million compared with net loss of RMB 193.2 million in the same period of 2021. Adjusted net loss, which excludes share-based compensation expenses, share of loss or income in equity method investments, and impairment loss of investments, was RMB 4.3 million in the fourth quarter of 2022, compared with RMB 100. 50.7 50.7 million in the same period of 2021. For the fourth quarter of 2022, basic and diluted net income per ADS were RMB 0.14 and RMB 0.14, respectively. While adjusted basic and diluted net loss per ADS were RMB 0.003 and RMB 0.003, respectively. As of December 31st, 2022, the company had cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash, and short-term and long-term bank deposits of RMB 6.81 billion, compared with RMB 6.64 billion as of December 31st, 2021. Moving forward, as part of our strategic focus on healthy long-term growth, our revenue may experience some immediate impact, which we believe is critical to our balanced growth. We will also strive to explore more commercialization channels and fine-tune our operations, supporting the sustainable long-term development of our platform, while also delivering greater value for our shareholders. This concludes our prepared remarks for today. Operator, we are now ready to take questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star, then one, on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. 
For the benefit of all participants on today's call, if you wish to ask your question to management in Chinese, please immediately repeat your question in English. At this time, we will pause for a moment to assemble our roster. And our first question today will come from Li Zhang of Bank of America Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, 管理层，晚上好啊！谢谢接受我的提问啊。我的第一个问题是啊，问一下今年的战略，因为我看到我们之前恢复了那个赛事版权的采买，所以想啊，请管理层分享一下二三年的一个整体的发展策略，还有我们怎么样能在这个内容成本增加的同时，又提升运营的效率。然后第二个问题就是啊，想请教一下，因为最近年初的那个游戏蛋仔派对非常的呃热，然后呢，想看一下这个在我们。那个游戏直播平台上的运营效果如何？还有，同时我们知道今年可能会有很多呃热门的一些有这些偏电竞的游戏上，呃，这个对我们平台用户呃和整个游戏的氛围有没有新的带动？谢谢，我自己翻译一下。啊、uh, ，Thanks, management, for taking my question. My first question is mainly on your strategy. We noticed that you have invested in esports content this year. Ah,、uh, can you share with us your strategy for 2023 and how to do it? Deliver operating、uh, efficiency will have additional in content cost. Uh, secondly, we noticed that X Party gain attraction this year.、Uh, and can you share with us this performance in live streaming?、Uh, and we also know that there are、uh, more new games、uh, to be launched this year.、Uh, will those、uh, games help on our user growth and game streaming relevance? Thank you. Uh, <coughs> 这边这边我来回答第一个问题。呃，就是呃呃，多维公司这边一直在坚持呃坚持和推进公司以游戏为核心的多元化呃内容生态，就是长的长期战略，然后构建呃关呃游戏的这个内容体系，然后呃我们在在重视经呃经济化的呃运营和服务的创新，然后也在也在构建积极的这个游戏内容生态。面对过去两年的整个宏观性宏观呃情况的变化，我们其实也做了一些调整，嗯、呃。我们在在呃谋求长期可持续的这个发展的同时，也在也在做呃在营收端做一些积极积极的一些调整。那通过这个精细化的这个呃运营运营成本的呃控制，然后呃来来确保公司的平稳发展。嗯，同时也优化了一些财务表现。所以在二二二年全年的这个调整之后，然后净亏损的这个大幅缩减。嗯、um, ，Mr. Chen will take the first question. As a leading game live streaming platform in China,、uh, we may remain committed to our long-term growth strategy of fostering a vibrant game-centric content ecosystem.、Uh, we continue to establish a diversified gaming platform by streamlining our operations and creating new services, propelling a vibrant game content ecosystem. Facing the ever-changing macro environment in the past two years. We made some adjustments to pursue long-term sustainable development.、Uh, those adjustments include ad- actively modifying our operating strategies to optimize our revenue structure and controlling business spending through fine-tuned operations. All the measures we've taken has not only stabilized the overall company's business but also improved our financial performance. And significantly narrowed our adjusted net loss for the full year 2022. 呃，我们在我们我们目前在展望二二三年的话，我们将继续采取这个稳健的一个运营策略，然后重视长期长期的发展。然后我们针对传统业务的减少了这个呃低低回报的一些投入，然后聚焦更加聚焦在一些新的业务增长上面。然后我们在重视这个用户规模增长的同时，也更加重视用户质量的提升。然后通过呃优质的优质的平台内容和一些呃升级产品结构。啊，强化一些我们的一些呃互动功能和完善整个呃进一步完善整个平台的社会生态，呃最终实现提高我们这个用户的这个留存和和体验。Looking ahead to 2023, we will continue to execute prudent operational strategies and focus on the long-term business process. We will reduce our investment in traditional business lines with low ROI. And focus on exploring new growth avenues. 
while pursuing growth in user scale, we will target improving user quality by delivering high quality content, upgrading our product structure, and strengthening our in interactive features. We are able to enrich our platform's ecosystem so that we can enhance our user experience and retention rate. 在成本投入方面来看随着用户需求的多样化但是这更利于平台的长期的发展 In terms of cost allocation, we conducted a detailed evaluation of the LI of each of our uh, expenses and allocated company's resources rationally and dynamically, dedicating limited resources to business lines with greater potential. Uh, for example, in terms of our user acquisition strategy, when we compared it with content-driven user acquisition, we noticed that channel promotions drove user growth in the short term, uh, but with lower retention rate uh, and conversion rate. As users' needs have becoming, uh, become more diversified, focusing on channel promotion is no longer a sustainable user acquisition strategy. Therefore, we have adjusted our overall marketing strategy in 2023, adhering to a content-driven approach to growth by continuously investing in high-quality content and cooperating with game developers to attract and engage users. Although investing in game in content is a more long-term process than channel promotion, we believe it's beneficial for our platform's sustainable development. Uh, <coughs> 重点赛事版权的裁判问题让平台的生态内容是建立在优质的内容的主播生态上面然后我们也通过多样化的资质游戏的内容和高质量的赛事版权的基础上建立更加丰富的内容生态 In terms of our co-corporate procurement, as we mentioned before, copyright tournaments are still of great value and we would uh, repurchase some co-corporate tournaments if the price level returned to a reasonable range. On that basis, we repurchased some co-corporate events in 2023, uh, such as the LPL and the LOL World Championship Tournament. High-quality streamers content, diversified and self-produced game-centric content, along with copyright tournament content, enable us to enrich our content ecosystem and foster our game-centric community, thereby solidifying our overall competitiveness in the industry. In在收入端我们将构建平台的这个用户健康可持续的付费意愿 Meanwhile, in terms of revenue, we will focus on ensuring that our users' willingness to pay on our platform is on a sustainable basis. 
such focus shift will have a short-term impact on our revenue. However, our offering leverage is expected to improve in the long run, which in turn supports the company's long-term profitability. At the same time, we are continuously exploring more innovative commercialization avenues. Thank you. Uh, let me answer your second question about the uh, AG Party. Uh, the Edge Party is a casual interactive mobile game. The game is easy to operate and highly interactive features. For this game, we prepared experienced, experienced streamers in advance and adopted the attractive incentive measures to encourage more players to engage in the game's live, live stream. Uh, meanwhile, leveraging the functionality of our user community, we organize the various daily clocking and teaming up activities within our community, community channel. We also provide the plenty of in-game items as rewards to increase players' engagement and interaction. This helps us effectively promote the game's uh, popularity and improve overall user thickness on our platform. From general, uh, until now, uh, AG Party's live streaming volume has ranked as the top of the industry. More than half of the segment's users participated in activities within our community channel during the promotional event. In terms of uh, new games, we eagerly anticipate the launch of more blockbuster games. For game centric content platforms such as Douyu, High quality games and their users are the most important source for content uh, generation and user growth. Based on game features, we will continue to create premium gaming content with uh, greater interaction, interactive and engaging features, as well as a wide ranging selection. We can't predict the exact schedule of the launch of this game, but according to our um, practice, we will cooperate with game developers uh, to promote the new game during the pre-launch stage. We will also select uh, experienced streamers and, uh, uh, and reach game content for players to watch and discuss and then provide interactive content such as game tutorials and the tournament events to increase user engagement, evaluate, uh, elevate user experience and enhance user thickness. Thank you. Okay, and our next question today will come from Thomas Chong of Jefferies. Please go ahead. Uh 管理层应该如何评估现在当前游戏直播行业的宏观的环境。Thanks, uh, Management, for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is regarding our strategic direction. Uh, given that uh, the company has made a number of strategic adjustments in the past two years, uh, how should we think about uh, the industry trend? Or uh, may I put it in this way that uh, how, should, uh, how should I think about um, the uh, management force regarding the game life broadcasting overall industry environment? Uh, and my second question is about um, the user scale uh, for this year, uh, if uh, there's any uh, qualitative color. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> 然后之前刚才我们也之前的沟通里面也提到了
，然后行业用户的范围扩大，意味着这些用户需求也发生了更多更多的这个变化。嗯、呃，这对呃内内容平台来说是一个机遇，也是一个挑战。那挑战在于是呃如何在已经具有规模化用户的这个规模上面，呃规模收入的基础上进行一些产品调整和运营调整，进而获取新增的用用户。啊，以及由此而进行的一些新的商业、商业、商业化的一些开发。呃、uh, ，Mr. Chen will take the fourth question. As we mentioned before, the competition we face in our industry has already transitioned from gaming live streaming to gaming content. Gaming content is a much larger market with a broader user base,、uh, expanding beyond hardcore gamers. Watching live streaming, uh, live, uh, watching uh, video game live streaming. This means users' needs are evolving,、uh, which is both an opportunity and a challenge for us. Given the large scale of our existing user base、uh, and revenue base, the challenge is how to adjust our products and operations to acquire new users and ex explore new commercialization channels. 呃，我们我们一直坚持以以内容取胜，然后通过优质的内容来获取获取新的用户，通过构建这个多元化的产品体系，满足不同用户的多元化需求，来提升这个呃用户的粘粘性，通过丰富的这个内容来吸引更加优质的用户，然后呃优质用户，然后通过各种各样的互动，然后自产生的呃自产一些呃自发的这种呃生产内容，进而构建平台内容生产和用户发展的一个这样一个生态循环。这也是我们所强调的健康可持续的游戏生态的建设，这也是我们过去一段时间一直呃以来呃呃一直在坚持做的事情。呃、uh, ，We uh insist on achieving success with premium game content. Specifically, we leverage high quality game content to acquire new users and build a diversified product system to meet users' diverse needs and improve users' stickiness. Attracted by wide-ranging content, high-quality users can also generate content through interacting and self-producing, fostering a virtual cycle on our platform of content production and user development. That we have emphasized to build a healthy and sustainable platform. It's what we've done in the past, and what we will continue to do in the future. Um, <coughs> 直播平台的这个离变现是比较近的，然后变现也相对容易。也因此也导致了过去很长时间的过度重视收入规模的，我们一直在过度呃过过度的重视收入规模，从而我们认为这客观上可能导致的平台的生态氛围在变差，不利于这个平台的长期健康发展。所以我们在过去一段时间内，我们也减少了很多主要是为了拉高收入而进行的营收活动。啊、呃，我们选择呃是针对礼物打赏的收入呃收入模，针对礼物打赏收入模式，我们通过更更多元化的这个营收产品。来满足不同用户的这个付费和习惯和需求，嗯、呃，强调这个营收产品的可持续性啊、呃，而且我们也在探索一些新的这个收入模式，比如说会员服务等。我们也知道这些调整是需要一一定的时间来进行的，所以我们嗯、呃、需要这个在呃精细化运营、控制成本费用的情况下，使得进行上上述调整的同时，使得平台具有这个长期的这个盈能盈利能力可以维持。Uh, furthermore, for a long time, we paid considerable attention to our revenue scale based on live streaming,、uh, based on our live streaming platform's easy monetization features. However, we think this may harm our platform's ecosystem and healthy development in the long run. Therefore, we have recently reduced our marketing activities that target revenue growth. Instead, based on our virtual gifting revenue mode. We provided diversified products to cater different users' paying habits and demands, while also emphasizing our product sustainability. In addition, we are exploring new initiatives such as a membership business. It took time to make these changes. Therefore, we focus on refining our operations and improving our cost and expenses control. In this way, while making the above adjustments. We still manage to maintain our platform's long-term profitability. Thank you.、Uh, let me answer your second question about、uh, MAO. As we have consistently communicated before, so it is a game-centric content platform that attracts and retains users by providing high-quality game-centric content and adopting user acquisition. 
efficient strategies to fit different business environments. In 2023, to navigate the volatile macro uh, environment with agility, we prioritized long-term business prospects, reduced our investment in traditional business lines with low ROI. Focus on our user uh, growth strategy of improving uh, user quality. We strive to strengthen our content operations as well as explore commercialization avenues. Our total revenues are mainly contributed by our content-driven uh, users with steady pin habits. We plan to largely cut our promotional expenses this year, which will directly affect our platform's MAO in the short term. Nevertheless, since most of these lost MAOs are short-term users on the uh, platform, this strategy won't affect our content operations or our monetization efficiency. In addition, with the purchase of copyrighted content, we expect to gain some um, tournament of users. By observing the uh, traffic on our LOL game segment, we found that the increased traffic that it brought couldn't offset the decline in uh, user skill resulting from uh, sustainability decreased promotional expenses. We believe that operational adjustments will enable us to increase our resource allocations in order to build a more sustainable content ecosystem. Although the return on these investments takes time, they will ultimately enhance our overall uh, competitiveness and support our platform's long-term development. Thank you. Our next question today will come from Yawen Zhang of China Renaissance. Please go ahead. Hey, 呃, so I have a couple of questions. First question regarding our license content, content procurement. So can you share our, our plan on how we plan to improve ROI on game content? And then secondly, can you give us an update on the 2022 whole year cash flow? Have we achieved a positive operating cash inflow? Thank you. Thank you for your questions. As to the first question on copyright procurement, Copyrighted tournaments played an important role in stabilizing a platform's traffic and improving our user engagement. In the past year, we adopted a selective copyright procurement strategy due to the overpricing of some copyrighted tournaments. With the price level of copyrighted tournaments gradually returning to a reasonable range, we have increased our investments in purchasing core copyrights in 2023. Major copyrighted tournaments we have purchased so far include League of Legends, Honor of Kings, Peacekeeper Elite, Crossfire, CSGO, and Dota 2. For the tournament copyrights we purchased, we will improve our return on investment through innovative operations. In terms of enhancing user engagement, we will continue to upgrade interactive features on platform to meet users' diversified needs by building on our accumulated experience in live streaming and operating copyrighted tournaments. For example, in LPL, by leveraging our top-tier streamer resources, we selected 12 streamers to do a co-streaming of the tournament's events. These streamers included both official tournament commentaries and top-tier streamers with massive fan base in these tournaments and on our platform. This co-streaming initi initiative achieved good results. The DAU, our live streaming channel, 
is on par with that of our official channel. In addition, the number of bully chats is several times higher than that of our official channel. Furthermore, we featured more user-friendly access to videos and community channels, our live streaming channel, thereby gaining more exposure for our, di for our diverse gaming content and attracting more users to join. In terms of commercialization, we continue to in integrate our copyrighted tournaments content with more refined operations. For example, we promote our game-specific membership services to tournament viewers. Meanwhile, we will explore more direct monetization opportunities based on copyrighted tournaments content. In addition to discussing the copyright price with copyright owners, we will communicate more proactively with them to explore reasonable long-term cooperation. So on the, on the second question on, of cash flows, as of December 31st, 2022, our overall cash cash balance, including cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash and deposits, amounted to RMB 6.81 billion, an increase of RMB 117 million compared with RMB 6.64 billion in the same period of 2021. This is mainly due to two factors. First, the increase in our cash balance is primarily a result of reporting currency translation as the appreciation of the US dollar increased the value of the large amounts of US dollar denominated cash assets we hold, totaling RMB 480 million. Second, in terms of cash outflow, we used a total of RMB 110 million in cash for the share we purchased. Other total cash outflow was RMB 210 million, of which the operating cash outflow was RMB 77.8 million. Thank you. Our next question today will come from Raphael Chen of the OCI. Please go ahead. 呃,晚上好,谢谢管理层接受我的提问。我的问题是关于付费用户数的。想请教一下公司目前的运营策略是否会影响到付费用户的规模。然后能否请管理层提供对未来付费用户的一个展望。我自己翻译一下。Thanks for taking my question. My question is regarding the paying user trends. Could management elaborate on how the current operation strategy will impact the paying users going forward? It would be great if management could share more insights on the paying user trend, especially in the year of 2023. Thanks. Thank you for the question. As mentioned previously, improving user quality is our key focus this year. In the second half of last year, we canceled some marketing activities for new paying users with low rates of return. That reflects the high quality of our current paying users with consistent paying behaviors for our services. In 2023, we plan to further reduce our marketing expenses and acquisition expenses for paying user acquisition, which will have an impact on paying user base. In 2023, we will continue to improve revenue quality and maintain our core paying user sickness and also their willingness to pay shifting the focus of revenue generation to the following two areas. First of all, we will put more emphasis on maintaining core paying users to ensure core business stability. We launched various tiers of paying products based on our users' different abilities to pay in order to sustain and improve their willingness to do so. Meanwhile, we rolled out more companionship-oriented functions and activities for our fans, not only maintaining the day-to-day -day interactions between streamers and fans, but also enhancing the fans' willingness to pay. Last year, we upgraded our user benefits and strengthened our interactive functions, substantially improving fans' thickness and steadily increasing 
members renew our rates. Second, we will explore more new non-virtual gifting business model based on game characteristics to improve our revenue mix. The game-specific membership service that we launched in the second half of 2022 is progressing smoothly. Despite its relatively small revenue currently, we believe this business can satisfy some gamers' demands for the games themselves. It not only attracts large number of game fans, thereby adding new users to our platform, but also appeals to existing users, so promoting a virtual cycle in our game content ecosystem. In short, developing our membership business will be a priority for 2023. Specifically, we will continue strengthening our platform-wide membership service while reinforcing our close cooperation with game developers to delve deep into users' gaming needs and extend our game-specific membership service to multiple segments. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for questions. I will now turn the call back over to management for closing remarks. On behalf of the management, thank you for joining our call. We look forward to speaking with everyone next quarter. The conference has now concluded. We thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect your lines.